Okay, I've got some really good lighting on a very special tree here. What are we looking at today? Look at that big leaf up there. Can you see that? That big giant leaf. Uh, anyway, this is a this is a very rare tree. It is Quercus tomentella, and uh, it is also known as the island oak and the Channel Island oak because it's endemic to uh, well, actually not endemic to the Channel Islands. The Channel Islands are the islands that are right offshore, well, south of here, off Santa Barbara. And there's, uh, I believe, three or four of them out there. And then, uh, of course, then there's Catalina Island. There's a few other islands out there. Uh, but then also, interestingly, this oak is uh, endemic and native to Guadalupe Island, which is like another 300 miles south of those islands. There's a big gap of ocean between those islands. So there's a lot of shared natives and endemic plants between Guadalupe Island on the far south of the chain all the way up to uh, the islands right off of uh, Santa Barbara. And this is one of them. Now, what's interesting, there's endemics on Guadalupe Island that don't occur on the northern islands and vice versa. And then there's shared endemics as well. And this is a shared endemic amongst all the islands. So again, it's Quercus tomentella and it is the Channel Island Oak, the Island Oak. Uh, this is a relict species. That means that it was much more widespread at one point. This tree was actually native to the continental region of the United States uh, and California. And so there's a lot of plants that are like that that got pushed out to the islands. And I think the reason why is the Ice Age basically took down all the stuff on the continent and the islands did not freeze. And that's what was able to, uh, to harbor those plants out there. And so that's why they didn't go extinct on the, uh, on the islands because they were more frost free because they had all that warm ocean water all around them. So there's lots of plants that are existing now that wouldn't be existing had it not been for the, uh, those islands being out there. So this tree can get, believe it or not, so I'm down here at Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo. This is, this is the place you want to go. If you want landscape architecture, this is where you go. You want to be a horticulturist, this is where you go. I didn't know that. I didn't know it until it was too late. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to be a plant geek. Well, I kind of was. I was always a plant geek, but I didn't know I was going to make any money at it until I was halfway through college and people were hiring me at San Diego to build gardens for them. By then it was too late to come here. So I took all my classes at uh, community colleges and learned all the skills I needed. Never really did get a degree in horticulture, but it turns out you really don't need one. <laughs> as long as you know what you're doing and you're good, and you're willing to work hard. But back to the tree. So uh, this campus, not only does it have a wonderful uh, horticulture department and uh, also a um, landscape architecture, uh, nursery management, that kind of thing. It, uh, they, they put out a lot of really cool plants all over campus. I want you to see how big my finger is here so you can see how big that leaf is. Isn't that incredible? Look at that. It's pretty stiff, but it's also really shiny. You know, typically this is like the opposite of a blue oak. A blue oak is from a region that's really hot and dry and austere. It has to reflect the sun in order to uh, stay alive. It has really little leaves. It can't expose itself uh, because of all of this uh, moisture loss that it would encumber it uh, during its survival. But you see this one, because it's from a coastal region, it can afford to be dark green. It can afford to have big leaves. They are stiff though. So you, that, that tells me it's from a place that's windy. If it's windy, look, if it's windy, you want stiff. Because if it's blowing around, it's losing moisture that way. So it looks like this thing has got some uh, adaptations to it. So Tomentella, I wonder like Tomentos, maybe that's why they call it Tomentella. The new growth has Tomentos material on it. Um, Anyway, the tree can get like uh, 60, 70 feet tall in really good conditions. And uh, it's pretty drought tolerant, not as drought tolerant as some of the other oaks, but still a wonderful plant to use. And this was a very rare tree to be able to get your hands on. I had a special job where we needed to source these and we couldn't, we could only get them in the 15 gallon plant, plant uh, pot sizes. But uh, it has a really beautiful kind of a shiny bark to it. There's really not a lot of deep fissuring reminds me a little bit of uh, a young Quercus agrifolia bark. So, but uh, what, this, what this means, because this plant basically got stuck out on those islands after probably from the ice ages pushing it out there, it means it's a more tropical form of oak. So that's really interesting. Now on Guadalupe Island, the goats that they let off on the island have eaten pretty much every one of these things and they're not regenerating. 
But that's changed recently because they've eradicated all the goats. I got a, a, a YouTube user or guy or whatever, subscriber, whatever you want to call them, people that watch my video, sent me a link of a guy that went out to the islands and did this really amazing video. I'm going to put a link to it on the bottom. And I want to like maybe subscribe to this guy's channel. I bet he's got all kinds of great stuff. But uh, he went there 20, 30 years ago, took uh, some still photographs, went back. Now that the goats are gone, and it's amazing what's happening on this island now. All these plants, some plants they thought were extinct because these goats ate them all, are all now coming back because of seed bank in the ground sprouting out. And there's little plants that were harboring on the cliffs away from the goats. And now they're proliferating all over the island very quickly. It shows how you can really recover an environment really quickly if you take away the stress on that environment. So we're going to put a link on the bottom there for you guys to check out. And um, that also is the island where... It has its own endemic, the Guadalupe fan palm, which doesn't occur on any of the other islands. And of course, that's one of my favorite plants. Uh, one, by far, one of my favorite palms, the most adaptable palm to the Bay Area. But anyway, that palm and this tree grow side by side on that island. And uh, that's about all I can think of to tell you about this plant. I'm sure if I spent more time here, I'd find all kinds of other cool things to video. This tree is uh, not in sunlight and I don't see any others that are but uh, there is some reflected light on it. So I'll see if I get a good long shot. This is a fairly young tree and uh, you know, it's obviously gonna get big and shady and beautiful, but I love the fact that it's super richly dark green and it just has a ultra lush appearance to the foliage. Almost like if you took a beautiful tropical ficus and crossed it with a regular old evergreen oak, coastal live oak, this is what you get. I like it.